We are live. We're live. Hey, everybody. How's it going? And welcome to Friday. It's finally Friday. This is Bruce here with Traveling with Bruce. How are you guys doing? Welcome to my daily live stream. Uh, this date, today, February the 9th, 2018. I wrote down. It's right there. Uh, two, February 9th, 2018. Welcome to my live stream with Traveling with Bruce. I uh, hope you had a good week this week. Um, uh, I've had an okay week this week. I'm not complaining. My channel's growing. I'm getting new subscribers. I'm, I'm getting viewers from all over the place. And uh, having lots of fun with these live streams. And... Uh, Really enjoying the commentary coming back and forth on the live stream. And also, uh, you know, after the live stream, all night long, I'm getting messages all the time. It's fantastic. Following all kinds of you guys and uh, uh, just having fun. Uh, this is uh, this was, uh, just, a, just a great week again. Um, I just want to say uh, to all of you regulars, uh, I just thank you so much for tolerating this poor quality of broadcast. <laughs> I look at some of my broadcasts like, oh, geez, it's not so good, but it's okay. Uh, I, I actually chuckle when I see some of my uh, broadcasts because they're fun. I, I think they're great. Uh, I, I hope we're keeping it light for everybody and uh, um, and making it educational. I sure I'm getting a lot of comments from people who are telling me, boy, if I learned stuff about cruising. I had no idea. Uh, your channel is just great. You, I learned more in one of your videos and watching 10 other videos and all this kind of stuff. And well, I thank you very much for that. Uh, I love to hear that kind of talk. It's kind of what I'd like to be known for is, uh, you know, get you information that you need to know and uh, kind of go from there. The, uh, the the viewers are already texting in, telling me what's going on, um, where they are and stuff. I just want to say if you're new to this channel, have you never watched me before? Uh, here's the deal. Uh, I'm Bruce. I'm in Creston, British Columbia, three miles north of the U.S. border, just north of Idaho. Uh, I look at America all the time out of my living room. Like, unlike, uh, unlike what's her name, Sarah Palin in Alaska, I don't think she could ever see Russia from her house. Uh, but I can see United States from my house. It's right there. And it's looking great. America's always looking great to me. I want to thank all of my American followers. Uh, you are my dominant audience. and I love you guys. Uh, you're just so much fun. I love it. My, uh, my Canadian viewers, of course. Hello from everybody in Canada that watches me. Uh, uh, from I don't know if I've got a viewer in every province yet, but it's close. Uh, and uh, I really enjoy uh, you know hearing from you guys and and uh, helping you out with cruise questions, and then uh, and then I've got the folks in the UK. Oh my goodness, I have followers in the UK that it's growing. It's my fastest growing segment of viewers. I'm going to just straighten up my three hairs here. Uh, fastest growing segment uh, on my channel. I can't believe how many UK UKers is that the right way to say it? United Kingdomers, uh, Brits great people i love you guys um just fantastic and i love watching videos from, from from folks over there who make videos and uh and then they're watching me it's fantastic and then down under australia oh man my australian audience it's growing it's fantastic i love it love you guys the kiwis new zealand uh, same thing uh <laughs> i hope you're enjoying it i i think it's i think i go live at an ungodly hour for you <laughs> <laughs> but you know uh it's friday night and it's saturday morning right now i don't know what time it is uh, if you're up you're up and you're watching you're watching otherwise you're watching the replay it's okay anyway the number of subscribers on my channel keeps growing uh when i went off the air yesterday we were at uh, 678 subscribers and right now i'm pushing 690 or so uh, it's been fluctuating a little bit today i, I think we're going to hit 700 later today i i feel it 10 away from 700 subscribers i am stoked about that and I'm excited because we're getting closer and closer and closer to 1,000 subscribers. Uh, those of you who don't know, February the 20th is the day I have to get to 1,000 subscribers. Just have to. I just have to. I might have to go on the air on the on the 19th of February and stay on the air the whole time until I get 1,000. I, I just I just gonna have to do like a 24-hour you know Bruceathon. <laughs> Traveling with Bruce Lathon. Help this poor guy. Find him subscribers. He's at 930. He needs 70 more. Anyway, I need to get 1,000 subscribers. Why? Because on the 20th of February, YouTube changes the rules with regard to monetization and being paid to do what you do. And if you don't have 1,000 subscribers, you're out. Right now, I'm in because I'm on the old rules, but I'm going to be out with the new rules if I don't get 1,000 subscribers by Feb 20. And that's why I'm making such a big deal about it every day. And my subscribers, who are already subscribers, are telling all their friends, you got to subscribe to this guy. He's great. And uh, I love it. Uh, when you new, you new viewers come in, there's a subscribe button here. There's another one there. Just click on that. You become a subscriber. costs you nothing. And you get to follow my exploits every day if you want or not. And uh, you're helping me get to where I got to get to, which is 1,000 subs. We'll make it. It's going to happen. Anyway, I better start saying hi to my folks here because this this 
I'll just show you. I get my smartphone here. This is where all my messages are. This is you guys live. This is where you're putting your message. I see them here. I look at the computer because there's a camera up there, and that's where I can kind of see it. And then I see myself and make sure the lighting's all right and my hair's okay. What's left of it, and uh, go from there. But let me say hi to my folks here because they are they are signing in like crazy. <laughs> this is fantastic. Welcome to Friday. Traveling with Bruce. Let's talk cruise ships. Ask me anything you want about cruise ship vacations, holidays, you name it. Steve Bartley was the first one to sign in today. Steve, how you doing, buddy? Hi, Bruce. He says, happy uh, uh, happy Beatles on Ed Sullivan Day. How is that? Oh, that's right. Isn't that, is that today? Uh, yeah, Fed night. That's right. Happy Beatles on Ed Sullivan Day. That's right. Uh, no one who wasn't alive then can possibly comprehend what an event it was. And you are absolutely right, because in 1964, when the Beatles came to the United States for the very first time, uh, they had just hit a number one record. Uh, that, that few days before they landed, they hit number one on the charts for the first time. And uh, the country just went crazy. And uh, the continent, North America, just went nuts. Uh, but we didn't have Instagram. We didn't have Facebook. We didn't have 55 channels or 255 channels or 555 television channels. We had three or four black and white TVs, uh, you know, all black and white televisions at that time. We had radio and we had newspapers. And uh, the newspapers were dominated by the establishment uh, writers and corporations. And they didn't like comment. They didn't want to talk about mop, four mop top guys in any serious way. The radio stations were mainly playing old time music and they weren't playing rock and roll very much. They had started in the fifties when Elvis finally made it, but they, they viewed it as sort of a kid's thing and as a not too serious thing. But in New York, the radio stations in New York, the AM stations, they were big time and same with Philadelphia and in Chicago and Los Angeles, the, the, the core, you know, the, the, the heart of rock and roll was, was taking hold. Same in Detroit, same in Detroit. And uh, when the Beatles arrived, it was just, it just exploded. Nobody, could ignore the Beatles, all the adults out there who were just poo-pooing Elvis and they were poo-pooing these other rock and roll acts and all these, you know, all these punks and uh, doing all this, you know, anti-religious stuff and they're bad for their children. and uh, You couldn't ignore it anymore. The Beatles showed up and everybody knew who they were and everybody had to pay attention. And when Mr. Ed Sullivan introduced them on his stage, they were legit because if you were on the Ed Sullivan show, you were it, baby. That was bigger than Johnny Carson ever got, bigger than Dave Letterman ever got. Ed Sullivan. He was the man, and uh, he had no talent. <laughs> Ed Sullivan was just a—he just introduced people like like me. I just, I have no talent. I just talk. But he brought the Beatles, and uh, he had them on for three weeks in a row. First week New York, second week out of Miami, third week uh, he uh, had a taped version of them from the first episode uh, taped and broadcast for the third week in a row. By the time they were on the third week in a row, they were already back in England, and they had conquered America already because now they had. Five number ones or five songs, uh, number one, two, three, four, five at the same time in the top 40. And they had five more in the next 15 spots because those are the B sides. And the Beatles dominated the charts for all of 1964. And I did a video about the Beatles and my dad. It's on this channel. And if you ever want to see it, check it out. You'll, fi you'll find it. Uh, Steve, thanks for mentioning that. Boy, do you bring back memories when you said that to me today? That's fantastic. Teresa McFarland. Hi, Bruce. Minus 10 today in Waterloo, Ontario. Teresa, you are never getting out of that deep freeze. You you're locked in. You're in a freezer. I can't believe it. Every day you're telling me minus 10, minus 12, minus 10, minus 14. I used to live in Waterloo, Ontario. I went to WCI, Waterloo Collegiate Institute in Waterloo, Ontario. My mom had a shop called Durndal Shots on King Street, right downtown Waterloo at King and Herb, selling dirndls. And I don't remember it being this bad all this time. It's unbelievable. You're just locked in there. I mean, I love that town. I used to go roller skating at Bingham and Roller Rink. You remember Bingham and Park? I used to go roller skating there every Friday and Saturday night. That's where the babes were. Well, you know, some of them. <laughs> That's where I was. <laughs> That's why the babes weren't there. Just, I just put that together. Never mind. Let's move on. Karen Lipshin is here. Hi, everyone. 20 degrees Celsius below with wind chill, 40 uh, below. Uh, car pile up just down the street. Oh, man. I tell you, Calgary's been whacked all week. Just whacked. All of southern Alberta. Blizzard conditions. God awful. Karen, welcome. Unbelievable out there. Teresa McFarland, 690. Wow, that is awesome. I know. It's it's fantastic, Teresa. 690 subscribers. It's it's awesome. I was at 100 on December the 13th, two months ago. So in two months, 590 subscribers. Started with 100. Added 590 more. Now I'm at 690. I I, I can't believe it. It's just it's just incredible. I, watch out, Casey Neistat. 
I'm coming for you. It's incredible. It's awesome. Christine, hey, Bruce, 29 degrees Fahrenheit in uh, Michigan. Christine, welcome back. Uh, Teresa McFarland saying, uh, is that in Hamilton? Karen. Uh, no, uh, Teresa, Hamil um, Karen is in Calgary, Calgary, Alberta, Western Canada. Just getting hit. She just mentioned it there. Wes Morrison saying, howdy, Bruce, 59 degrees in New Bronze Fells, Texas. Excellent weather again, Wes. Welcome back, buddy. Good to see you. Welcome to Friday. Sylvan Forrest is here. Hi, Bruce. 77 degrees here in Delray Beach, Florida. Sunny and pleasant. Drink of the day is Bloody Caesar with my cigar. Y you killed me. <laughs> yeah, I love it. <laughs> Sylvan, fantastic, man. Welcome. Welcome to Friday. Extra special, uh, little extra salt there. And uh, Oh, man, it's, it's all good stuff. Elizabeth is here saying, I'm here. My kitchen floors have just been redone over a few days of chaos. I can now relax and watch you. I look forward to this daily. Thank you. Oh, Elizabeth, welcome back. It's great to have you. Glad to hear about your kitchen floor getting done. Welcome back. Teresa McFarland saying, nice weather, Sylvan. Yeah, man. Betsy is here from Hamilton, six below and snowing lots. Oh, man. You're getting, Alberta's just sending it to you. First, you know, Western Canada's got it. Now they're sending it to you. Oh, by the way, you know, here in Creston, just so you folks know, yesterday I was just telling you how beautiful it was here. 55 degrees yesterday. As Spokane was 57. I had a viewer there. Had another viewer in uh, in Paula, Washington, I think it was called. Uh, 55, 57 degrees Fahrenheit. Well, uh, about an hour after this broadcast ended last night, the wind picked up. <laughs> something blew into town. <laughs> it, was, it wasn't. It wasn't something good. Uh, it came from Alberta. It came from northeast rather than our systems normally coming from the west and heading towards east. Oh, no, no, no. This one came from the northeast backwards. Yeah, yeah. That's some of that cold weather that Alberta has too much of. They decided to share a little bit with me. We had a low of 20 overnight, which, you know, not as bad as others out there, but 20 below. We lost 35 degrees in like three hours. And all day today, we've been about zero. 32 degrees, zero Celsius, 32 degrees Fahrenheit, kind of a cloudy day. But uh, what can I say? It's winter. And actually, 32 is normal. That's what we're supposed to be. So what can I say? Uh, what do we got here? Uh, Betsy is saying six below. Teresa is saying we are getting a lot of snow here in Waterloo as well, Betsy. Yeah, I figured you would be, Teresa. Francis Williams is here. Hey, Bruce, from Beaumont, Texas, 74 degrees and cloudy. Wow. Cloudy, but 74. Thank you very much. Way to go there, Francis. Welcome back. Karen Lipshin driveway snow, snow banks are seven feet tall in the driveway. Oh, <laughs> snow in the driveway, and you're building up the snow on the side of the driveway, seven feet high. Uh, that tells you how much snow it is. That's unusual for Calgary. Uh, that's a lot. Teresa McFarland. Wow, you win, Karen, with the snow. Debbie Emanuel is here. Hi, Bruce. Happy to be back with you. Welcome back, Debbie. It's great to see you. Uh, tell me, where are you from and what's your temperature today? How high are you getting today or how low? Susan McGuinian is here, 85 in Tampa today. That's five more than the last time you talked to me. Uh, Susan, this is awesome. Finally put the air conditioner back on. <laughs> you, when you got a cave, you know, you got a cave, right? I mean, when you got it, you know... Life is tough, and when conditions warrant, you, you know, you have to turn to desperate measures. Desperate times calls for desperate measures. Put the air conditioner on, my goodness. Fantastic. Christine, I think I'm having technical difficulties. No, Bruce, anyone else? Let me take a look at my screen. Uh, I think I'm live. I'm okay. Uh, I'm on my phone, so I think I'm okay. Uh, let's see here. Camera guy, 24 degrees and blizzard conditions here in Metro Detroit. Oh, man, you're getting what Hamilton's getting, camera guy. You're getting what Waterloo's getting. You're not that far away from those guys. Crash 3X is here from Ottawa. Hi there. How you doing, Crash 3X? You're my number one. Uh, sell Van Forest, to, uh, 763 channels on TV and nothing worth watching. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, my. I, I just don't want to go there. <laughs> Just don't want to, I don't want to go there. Uh, yeah. Uh, Crash 3X, minus six today in Ottawa. Spent the afternoon at the movies. I ran away from home. <laughs> well done. <laughs> nice, nicely done. Uh, Teresa McFarling saying, good times, roller skating. Yes, Bangamon Park and Waterloo, Ontario, Friday nights, Saturday nights. Folks, you haven't lived unless you were alive in 1970. Oh, 70, 71, 72, 73, and you're like 16, 17 years old, then 18 years old, and you went roller skating uh, at Binghamton Park in Waterloo, Ontario. And uh, on uh, on Saturday night, like Friday night, and on Sunday night, they played records, you know, just 45s, hits of the day. But Saturday night at Binghamton Park, that was the night to go roller skating. Why, you ask? I'll tell you why. Because they had a live band in the middle of the floor. You skated around the rock and roll band. They brought in a live act. And so you're roller skating to a live rock and roll band in your in your hometown rink. I mean, how good is that? Two bucks admission. 
I mean, come on. How, how can you beat that? Coke was 25 cents. Uh, chocolate bars were, what, a quarter in those days? The girls were so much younger then. Uh, I was so much younger then. <laughs> I was in good shape. I, you know, roller skating three, four hours a night. Man, oh, roller skating. Good times, Teresa. Lip, Karen Lipson saying, that's a 40-car pileup. Oh, my gosh, Karen, you've got problems in Calgary. Crash X is saying, yes, Super Skate 7, the great skate place. I never never checked that one out. I went to the Recreo Tech in Montreal in the 70s. I love that place. Girls are even prettier there. <laughs> And well, even better dressed than in Calgary. I mean, in Kitchener, Waterloo, Ontario. Oh, good, those days. Oh, I miss those days. Scott Batchley saying, hi, Bruce. It's a wonderful 65 degree here and a day here in Ventura, California. Yes, it is. Uh, way to go, buddy. Uh, welcome back, Scott. That is fantastic. Sherman Mercer is here. 71 degrees Fahrenheit in Angleton, Texas. You got you Texans. You're you're keeping it all to yourselves, aren't you? You you're just you're not sharing that nice weather with us. Uh, we're 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 looking at you guys with envy. Oh, it's fantastic. No wonder a whole bunch of Northerners head down to Texas every year to get away from the cold. Angela A is saying, in the 80s in Tampa, I'm going to start not reporting out. <laughs> People are going to start throwing tomatoes. <laughs> We're envious. Uh, believe me, we are envious. Betsy saying too much snow. Debbie Emanuel, Northern California, 73 here with clouds. Ah, it's not too bad. Uh, you know, room temperature with clouds. We'll take it, Debbie. We I take it. <laughs> and then PJ is here. PJ Dryton, 16 in Omaha. Welcome, PJ, from Omaha. Fantastic to have you. Uh, Crash your ex uh, uh, cruising King Street Friday, Saturday night. I'm sure they still do it, but King Street doesn't look the same anymore. No. That was the thing in those days. We, you know, the guys would bring out their cars and we'd be cruising up Friday and Saturdays, you know, and heading for the drive in, you know, the, where the girls came out and brought you the tray for your car. And guys were comparing cars and comparing how to maintain them. And, you know, that, that we didn't have internet. We, we, we didn't have, we couldn't compare software programs. We couldn't compare apps. We compared cars and uh, talked about our parents <laughs> and our older brothers. And our younger sisters, uh, you know, we we talked all about them because you know they were the they were wrong. We were always right. You know, we we were the, we were the mature ones. <laughs> so much fun. Elizabeth is saying, "I lived in Ventura. I miss it. Right on the uh, Monotuck by the beach, even closer than I'm here in Daytona." Oh, there you are. So you one coast to another. Fantastic. You're a coaster, Elizabeth. You're a coaster. No question about it. And why not? Beautiful views. Uh, beautiful weather. Oh wow. Fantastic. Fantastic. Welcome, everybody. Uh, this is great. Got a nice crowd here. Got a whole bunch of viewers here, uh, uh, regulars. If you're watching and you're new and you've never been here before, uh, you can you can type in if you want. Tell me where are you watching me from. Tell me what your high temperature is today. Ooh, the crowd, the group here will welcome you in right away. They'll say hi to you. And uh, they start talking to each other. That's what starts happening here. We, this site's becoming kind of a, you know, kind of like a get-together site. And um, occasionally, you know, single guys will show up and... Uh, you know, single single wannabe girls will show up, and <laughs> people will pretend. <laughs> people will pretend to be single. <laughs> oh, what can I say? You know, it's not Vegas, but what stays in Vegas stays in Vegas. Well, what stays here stays here because after this thing goes live, after I post this, you can't see the comments. Like all you who are who are watching this live, just so you, you know, those of you've never been here before, the comments that are here now are not on this video later tonight. If you're watching this tonight. And you're wondering, well, where are the comments? What, what, what comments are you talking about? You're talking about comments? Yeah, well, I can read them, and we can share them during the live. But once we post the video, it's just me. This is all you get. You have to wait for me to interpret what's going on here. And we're having fun. Uh, so welcome, everybody. This is fantastic. Mary W. is here. Welcome. Hi, everybody. Hi, Mary. How are you doing? Welcome back to the uh, welcome back to our live stream. It's good to have you. So here we go. I, I got a question for you guys. Uh, uh, first of all, did any of you guys see my video that I made 45 minutes ago? I did a live on the spot four minute video that I just pulled off on my cell phone announcing that I was going live in 45 minutes. So I went live to say I was gonna go live in 45 minutes. I was wondering anybody saw that? I, I it had about 20, 25 views by the time I came on air. I was just having some fun today. I did the same thing on uh, Twitter. I did the same thing on Instagram today. Uh, you just hold your cell phone and you hit a bunch of buttons and I tried to figure it out. And uh, sometimes it's successful. <laughs> Most of the time it's not so successful because I, I keep forgetting how you know how each system works, how each platform works, and eventually I get a, I get a little video put together. I just sort of talk and tell them what I'm going to talk about. So today I'll tell you what I want to talk about. Just double checking here with some more messages that are coming through here. Oh my goodness! Uh, let's see here. Um, Scott Batch is saying hi. Elizabeth Ventura is still still nice and is surviving the fires and the mudslides, and it's getting better again. Thank goodness for that. 
Uh, and then Elizabeth saying that's why I traded it for Florida. Uh, <laughs> Teresa McFarland saying nope. I'm not sure why she's saying nope. Must have been another question. Uh, and Debbie is going, uh, yes, saw your live feed from your cell phone. Debbie, you saw it. Okay. Sherman Mercer, I just want to mention an excursion uh, from Carnival called Faster to the Fun um, at Separate Security. Um, baggage immediately loaded and rooms cleaned first. We're on board about 40 minutes from from the car to the stateroom. Yeah, I've heard about this. Um, oh, Teresa saying was busy shoveling at the time. She didn't. She didn't see me live. That's what it was. She didn't see me live at the time. Back to you, Sherman, on that comment regarding uh, uh, Carnival. Yeah, we have we have talked about this here a couple weeks ago. Someone mentioned it, and I, I, we brought it up a little bit. And that's a good thing to mention again, uh, especially those of you who are new to cruising or, or wondering. Um, it, you know, up until uh, oh, maybe only a couple of years ago, really, uh, cruise ships were sort of quite. Um, um, what's the word I'm going to look for? I'm going to look for democratic might be the way everybody has sort of a equal footing. Once you're on the pier, when you get to the, when you get to the pier to get on your ship for the cruise, you're kind of treated equally, uh, with your bag drop, generally speaking, uh, again, up until a few years ago. And, uh, you would, you would hand your baggage over to the sky caps. They would take it from there. You give them a couple of bucks for each, you know, buck for each bag, something like that, a little tip. And then they would feel like strippers when they left later. Cause they had all these $1 bills. Uh, and then you went up to the, uh, to the terminal, you know, where the, where the check-in gates are and, and you just get in line. And, uh, up until a few years ago, generally you, you just, you, the, the folks would ask you, there'd be ambassadors there with little name tags. They have a logo like carnival logo or Hall in America logo, whatever line you were with. And they find out, well, you know, you're, you're on the ship today. Great. What, what, you know, what's your room number or what's your last name? And sometimes they would file you, uh, you know, all the last names from A to F over here and from G to whatever over there and everyone up to Z over there. Uh, but lately, uh, what started to happen is now they ask you, uh, um, what your last name is. And a lot of these, uh, ambassadors have little handheld units or, or they scan your reservation, uh, barcode thing right onto a thing, or, or you've printed out your, you've printed out your, uh, bo your boarding thing from home on your home computer, or now, of course, it's all on our phones and, uh, they scan that and they, they immediately figure out, Oh, you're one of those, uh, one of those upper end clients of ours you're a first class customer of ours you're in the haven in in the norwegian cruise line or you're in the yacht club for msc uh you're in one of these you know upper then they send you to a special area over here kind of like the first class check-in like at the airport uh but don't worry the regular lineup is fast and moves great they have 35 40 50 agents at a time handling passengers and away we go anyway carnival uh, just brought out something here that uh, that he's talking about uh, just going to go back here to sherman's uh, comment it's called uh, faster to the fun so you pay extra for this faster to the fun pass or package. And this gives you privileges all along the cruise. It lets you check in faster, like you were saying, 40 minutes from your car to your room. Uh, or it'll get, to, get you off faster, gets you off the ship faster. It gets you off the ship faster uh, on um, de-embarkation days when you get to port. So if you're in, say, uh, Grand Cayman and you got to take a tender to, to get to shore, uh, because you have one of these passes, you, you get to go down first. You, you might be allowed to get off right at eight o'clock or or a set time, and you get pat, you walk past a lineup of people who have been waiting, to, and you just get right on the tender and you go because you paid extra for the privilege. Uh, all kinds of little things like that. Also, uh, I think you have a separate lineup at the customer service counter, so you have like the regular line, and then you have the like you know this line over here. And if you're in that line, you, you, they call you next, and everyone else has to wait. But anyway, you pay extra, you get more. That's what he's talking about, and that's uh, pretty interesting. Um, Elizabeth Breen is saying, uh, uh, to let you all know, faster to the fun is worth it, she's saying. And if the excursion is sold out, which happened to us, uh, if you check it every day, it can come up again, which happened to us, also worth it. Well, there you go. So they kind of keep an eye out for you. If you're uh, one of those pass holders, something else comes up and you want it in, they'll call you. Uh, Karen wants to know, what's the cost? Do you still give luggage to uh, porters? And Teresa's saying, now they sit you, now they... Now they sit you what your status is in the cruise line. I, I think uh, I think what she means by that is that is that when you are in the terminal, you're sitting in areas in the terminal. You know, like this these folks way over here, they're part of this group, uh, this level of of room, uh, and over here. I'm assuming that's what you mean. Uh, let me check here. Francis Williams is saying Sherman Mercer. How much is faster to the fun? Elizabeth Breen is saying fifty dollars uh, per stateroom, which includes everybody. 
Uh, you board early and your check bags will be in your room, which is available to you. So you are free to swim and eat without waiting. Well, there you go. Now, for those of you who don't get this uh, who, or some cruise lines that don't offer this exact little package, uh, believe me, they all will. If they aren't already. Uh, the, the, the traditional way of, of taking care of your first day is, is in your handheld. Uh, maybe maybe it's a small suitcase with wheels on it, like one of those small ones that you put in the overhead. In there, you have everything you need for your first day, including all your valuables. So all your medications, all your dough, all your jewelry, your first day's clothing, like your bathing suits and your flops, you shove all that into the into that carry-on. So when you get on the ship, even if you're not part of this package that we're reading about here, you get on the ship and, and you head for your room anyway. And uh, you can get to your, your room, you can go to your little vault there inside the closet, and you can put all your valuables in there now. And if you want to go swimming right away, you want to go swimming, you know, close the door, change into your trunks and uh, grab the robe that's in the room and uh, head for the deck. Towels are at the deck and you're already in the pool in the hot tub while people are getting on board behind you. And half of them haven't figured that out. They got their swimming suits in their suitcases. They get on the ship and their ba their baggage doesn't arrive for four hours, five hours after the muster drill, like, you know, way later. And you're already in the hot tub. Nobody's there. So think about that. But this this pass gives you this quick Delivery of your baggage as well, because it's labeled especially for that. And then you got your stuff and you're unpacked first and, you know, get out of the way and you're on your way. So that's a, that's a pretty interesting uh, thing. Um, let me just see here. Uh, Elizabeth saying, yes, I agree. That's uh, you get set up front. Yeah, you get set up front with the priority people, Elizabeth is saying. That this, this pass gives you that as well. Sherman saying, Francis, it varies by length of cruise. It's, it's charged by the cabin. Uh, and our five day was fifty nine ninety five. And I guess it's a 14 day. It might be more. I don't know. Uh, uh, Francis is saying thanks, Sherman, and then Crash Three X is saying, um, "If faster to the fun, if faster to the fun is sold out, check every day. Some people change their minds, and it'll pop up again. So, uh, I guess they sell a certain number of those faster to the fun passes, which makes sense to me because you can't sell all two thousand passengers uh, faster to the fun pass because we're now all trying to get faster." <laughs> <laughs> we'll have we'll to then have another one called even faster to the fun pass and then the fastest of the fastest of the fun passes that's 150 bucks and you can elbow people out of the way i don't know i'm just i'm just horsing around <laughs> but it's a good idea and if you limit it to so many people you know you put a premium on it and people know that hey uh, they only have like 200 of these or 100 or 400 or whatever the number is small number of the percentage of the ship it makes it kind of a thing to have and uh, makes sense to me. Uh, I can see how that works. Okay. Uh, my question for you guys today, uh, gang, that is out here. Um, uh, first time cruiser questions. I, I've got like first time cruiser tips is kind of what I was thinking of. And I thought you folks uh, should give some first time cruiser tips. That was one already, the faster to the fun pass. That's a good tip. Uh, I got a couple of questions for you. Like, should we recommend, you know, Inside room or balcony room for a first timer? Uh, my personal take is balcony. I mean, you got to get the experience of it. But if it's a dollar issue, you know, if you're you're scraping for a for a cruise, you know, you, you know, you've never done one before, and you're saving up your pennies, and you can afford it, is it worth taking a first time cruise for a first timer, where you book the inside room, or should you avoid that and wait until you can afford at least a ocean view? Or, or a balcony. I'm curious about what your thoughts are on that. Uh, see what you think about that. Uh, Sherman Mercer says, elbow pass is funny, Bruce. Yeah, I, I thought, you know, I have, hey, I paid extra for this. I'm allowed to do it. Uh, Elizabeth saying, I'd probably help clean rooms if I get on the ship at 7 a.m. <laughs> I would, I don't want to be in those rooms. Oh, no. Some of the stories I'm hearing about what's left behind, I, I don't think so. <laughs> Laugh out loud, Elizabeth Francis is saying, uh, yeah, what do you think, folks? Should should uh, you know? Is it if you're going on your very first cruise ever? Is it balcony or nothing? Or hey, if if you can afford it inside, take it because the experience of the whole thing is going to be overwhelming anyway. And you just treat your inside room as a bedroom and treat your the rest of the ship as your rec room, your living room, your dining room, your you know that kind of thing. Uh, kind of curious what you thought about that. Uh, Sherman is saying here first timer tip is do not overpack. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Uh, they, you know, you, you see some of these folks coming on cruise ships that have these giant 70 pound suitcases, the ones that you, you get charged extra for at the airport. And they're just, they're just stuffed, overstuffed. And you're on like a four or five day cruise, seven day cruise, you're packed for three weeks. What do you, what, what do you, what do you bring it? You know, no point. Um, <laughs> let's see here. Uh, 
John Johnson saying, in my opinion, <clears throat> ocean view are a bit of a waste of money. Uh, first timers spend so much time exploring the ship. Uh, go inside cabin because you'll never be in the uh, room. You know, and they, well, there you are, right? If you've never been on a cruise before, uh, the whole thing is new. I mean, it, you know, using a bathroom on deck 16 is new. I mean, it's all new. So uh, how much time are you going to spend in your ship when you're a newbie anyway? Um, you're going to be exploring the thing from front to back, every deck, every layer level. It's going to take you the, the whole first and second day to see it all because some of these, as we know, the, you know, the oasis of the seas, the harmony of the seas. <laughs> How long is it going to take you to see the harmony of the seas? Front to back, top to bottom, and the whole cruise. I mean, it'll take you forever. So how much time are you going to be spending in your room? That's a good point. Uh, <laughs> uh, Francis Williams is saying, the inside room worked great for us our first time. There you go. John Johnson saying, go with a balcony on uh, if the itinerary has a view all the time, i.e. like Alaska, with those beautiful, uh, beautiful uh, glaciers and the fjords and, you know, yeah, uh, that would be something. Elizabeth is saying, okay, so here is my opinion living in Florida. All right, Elizabeth, here we go. If you can take one cruise a year, balcony. Uh, we take three. So inside for us, we wake up early, uh, we sleep early, and we're never in the room. The decks are lovely. Well, you see, there, there you are. You, you, just, you just make the ship your balcony. The rest of the ship is your balcony. And if you're up early enough, there's nobody on the, uh, you know, the pool decks. You can hang out there if you want. Or you can go right up to the top, you know, where the sports decks are and, and uh, look out over the back of the ship, like on a princess cruise liner. <clears throat> or, uh, you know, walk around and get your exercise and do the walking, the jogging track. I call that the walking track. And uh, get some fresh air up there or walk around the promenade deck and there's nobody out there. It's wonderful. Or even, if, even in the middle of the day, I mean, who cares? Middle of the day, you're at sea. And the ship is crawling with three, four, or 5,000 people. There are nooks and crannies all over that ship where there is nobody. Uh, because these ships are so huge. And they have so many places you can go and hide. Uh, the library, uh, you know, the, the, where the art gallery is, uh, where the, the bistro is, and sit over there. And depending on the time of day, there's times of day where there's nobody there. Now, at the bistro, first thing in the morning, everybody's there. <laughs> Everybody that needs a good cup of coffee, they're at the bistro. That's where I am. I got to get my latte, man. Uh, but then after, you know, around 10 in the morning and at 2 in the afternoon, cake and coffee at the bistro area. Wonderful. Read a book. Oh, wonderful. Uh, Teresa is saying a book inside. You're getting the same entertainment, same food, etc. cetera. Uh, it's the same as everyone else. And you paid less. You know what, uh, Teresa? I, I, uh, a friend, I and a friend of mine, we share the same kind of an expression. We don't mind being the poorest guys in a real nice neighborhood. Just don't mind a bit. I, I love, in Las Vegas, I love hanging out at the Bellagio. I don't stay at the Bellagio very often, but I love hanging out at the Bellagio and playing the slot machines, the you know the nickel slots there, because uh, I just kind of like the atmosphere of the place. I love being, uh, I love being on a Hall of America ship, and, and I know there are guys and girls up in that, the owner suite up there paying, you know, 3000 a night, 4000 a night, five, whatever. The butler is there. And everything. I got my room over here. I got the deal of deals. I'm in the same neighborhood. I, I, I get the same chef working for me downstairs pretty well. I, I, you know, we share the same water, share the same swimming pool. It's great. I love it. Great way to go. Um, Sylvan is saying, first timer tip, pack a roll of duct tape. Yes, sir. Uh, Sylvan, tell us why. Tell us why you need the duct tape because it's a darn good tip, and I, I want to read that for my uh, viewers. Suzanne, Suzanne is saying, uh, my first cruise was inside, four-night four night cruise on the inside. I loved every minute. Uh, it was midship, and uh, I liked the dark room at night, because when you shut the lights off, she's dark in there. <laughs> if it's a longer cruise, I prefer ocean view uh, uh, per a balcony. Uh, there you go. So, the, you know, this is great. Uh, I, did, I did my... Uh, trip with my daughter um the daddy daughter cruise which is mediterranean mediterranean cruise it was 11 days we went from southampton to barcelona and we went all the way to naples and rome and florence and uh monte carlo uh we had an inside room uh we had you know we had the two beds two single beds and we we just we slept like logs because you know, during the daytime you're in the mediterranean uh this is uh this is late september it was still hot it was still in the 80s uh high 80s and uh, <clears throat> we go on shore and we'd walk, uh, we'd walk, say, in uh, 
Gibraltar for the day, or or we were in uh, Malaga for the day, Malaga, Spain. Oh man, the heat! It would just get to you. And uh, after four or five hours being, you know, walking around, uh, we were pooped. And we'd head back to the ship, and uh, you know, I'd go to the spa and and, and immediately uh, get a shower in there, and then be in the steam room or or, or in the jacuzzi to loosen, you know, keep the muscles loose, and then just relaxing in the in those heated ceramic lounges. Aren't those great, folks? And uh, it just, you know, having a nap. I mean, literally just sleeping for a while, uh, and then having the dinner. Uh, dinner would be about six or seven at night or whatever. We'd be done by seven thirty, eight o'clock, maybe see a comedy show by nine 30, 10 o'clock. It's over. I'm done. It's over. And if I take a little stroll around the uh, promenade deck, just to kind of little, get a little bit of air before I pack it in, I get back to the room at 10, 10, 15 at night, 10, 30. I tell you, uh, my daughter's, all, <laughs> she's probably already in bed. Uh, if or reading a book maybe, or, or, or getting ready to go to sleep. I, I lie in, go to bed. I'm gone in 15 minutes, folks. It's, it's over. Uh, couldn't have slept better. Fantastic. Next morning, wake up. New city in Europe. Where are we now? And uh, we're going on another tour, and here we go, and we're doing it all over again. I, I I didn't gain weight on that cruise. Ate lavishly, wonderfully. Didn't gain a pound. Uh, just worked it off all day long on these excursions. It was fantastic. Just loved it. Uh, Charlie Baum. Hey, Charlie, you're here. How you doing, buddy? Hi, Bruce. The first cruise was a carnival cruise. Uh, I got an uh, obstructed view room. So you you had a, an ocean view. Uh, no balcony, but I could open the door for air. Oh, that, that's interesting. Um, uh, okay, cool. Uh, that would uh, that would be, you know, a little different. But uh, you got a little bit of everything, didn't you? You got a view. You got a little fresh air if you want it. It's okay. Karen is saying, uh, Karen Lipson, uh, we like afternoon naps. So inside is fine. And uh, best tip, uh be happy you're on holidays. Yeah, that's right. Best, The best tip for a new cruiser is don't sweat the small stuff. Nothing to sweat about. You're on a cruise, you're on a holiday, and 99% of everything you need is being taken care of for you. Uh, don't, don't worry about the little stuff. You'll be fine. You'll be fine. It's going to be great. Uh, Sean Johnson saying, fun tip. Uh, if you book an inside room early and call a few weeks before embarkation, ask if there are any upgrades available. If there were cancellations, you can often benefit by upgrading for cheap. Now, there's a good tip for a first-timer and a recurring cruiser. That's a good tip to know. Uh, you know, you book it, and then you just happen to call up, and hey, this happens. People book, you know, people book cruises, as we know, a year, year and a half in advance, way in advance, and things happen. You know, medical issues come up, uh, you know, things change. And then, you know, next thing you know, uh, you, you have to cancel because you can still cancel without a penalty or the cancellation is a small penalty if it's getting close. But if you're calling here on the last you know month or so, six weeks or so, you may find that by phoning in and talking about upgrades, they may well have you know 15 or 20 or 30 balcony rooms that got canceled in the last few weeks. And a few of them have been picked up, but uh, the sales are kind of down. And here's somebody who's already on the ship and uh, they might be able to negotiate a deal for you that uh, you can't beat. They might throw you a deal that says, uh, look, it's uh, it's 30 bucks more a night per person, but we'll give you a hundred dollar cabin credit or we'll give you a free, uh, you know, soft drink package for two or who knows what they'll throw in. Towards the end, deals start to get tossed up. So yeah, good idea. Good for anybody. Really. That's fantastic, Sean. Thanks. Uh, Sylvan is saying, I prefer an inside room except for transatlantic crossings. Okay. Very good. Uh, Elizabeth is saying, uh, it's like real estate. You buy the least expensive house in the highest priced neighborhood. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly my philosophy. <clears throat> yeah, why not? Why not? Uh, why not do that? And, you know, if you're going to buy a Mercedes, you can't afford the S class. Well, get the C class. It's a Benz. It's got the logo on it. And it's, uh, you know, it's a nice little car. You get, to, you get to go to the same dealership for maintenance and you get to hang out in their coffee room, get free donuts and stuff. Mind you, to, ch <laughs> to change the oil might cost you 300 bucks. I, I don't know if that's such a good idea. But anyway, I mentioned it. Uh, <laughs> uh, Sherman Mercer saying, uh, uh, another first-timer tip, uh, watch a packing video on Bruce's channel. Well, no, no, well there, there you go. Uh, okay, thank you for that. Uh, I, I didn't realize that was there, and I just read it. <laughs> Thanks, Sherman. Uh, I do what I can. Uh, there are some great YouTube videos uh, by others uh, on packing tips and stuff. And so, you know. Go to YouTube and uh, figure that out. Uh, Crash 3X is saying, uh, her best tip, she's saying, um, uh, put your um, 
uh, I think you're saying put your phone in airplane mode. Uh, I think that's what you're trying to tell us. Uh, turn off roaming. Uh, you will get charged international rates if you forget. Some people think uh, we aren't using it and forget, and, and you get home and there's a huge bill. Yeah, exactly. Uh, your cell phone. Um, before you leave town, contact your provider, your cell phone, cell phone provider, the plan that you're using, and uh, find out what kind of a deal you can get for your phone uh, leaving the country. Because if you're going on just a Caribbean cruise, you might be in St. Thomas and St. Martin and Jamaica or Cayman or Cozumel, Mexico. Uh, don't leave your phone on. Uh, turn it to airplane mode. Shut the thing off and leave it in your vault in your room if you can. But if you're taking it with you and you want to use it for just sending a text or you took you took a photo, uh, a selfie of yourself, you want to send it to your friends back home, don't make this a $10 selfie. Uh, that you don't want to do that. So check with your provider. You might be able to get like international deals, uh, like a, a flat rate 10 buck a day deal or a $5 a day deal or a $29.99 unlimited package good for 30 days. Find out and, and, and see. If you can't get a good deal like that, uh, then, then be mindful of the fact that you really should just shut that thing off and forget about it and send the selfies back when you get back to uh, the U.S., if that's where you're starting from. Okay, that's a good tip. Uh, Sherman is saying, uh, Sean Johnson, great tip. Elizabeth is saying, does anyone want advice on cruising with children? Uh, the, it, we, you know, that's a good, I think that's a good one. Yeah, we could use those. Uh, I've got something about that here in just a second. Sean Johnson saying, Elizabeth B, what aspect of cruising with kids are you concerned about? Because he might have some ideas too. Sean is saying, happy to help if, can, if I can, Sherman. Uh, people, uh, Bruce provides travel fans a great place to collaborate. Love this channel. Uh, that's what this is all about, folks. Let's let's talk. Share share ideas, share thoughts. Let's go from there. I wanted to bring up something today um, as my sort of second part of this. I uh, still want to hear more tips if you want on uh, for first timers. But I heard a new term today uh, that I thought was pretty interesting. It's called it's called skip gen cruising. Skip gen cruising. And uh, it may have been around a while, but I, I heard about it this morning. It just kind of caught my eye and my ear, and I looked into it. And what is skip-gen cruising? It's when grandma and grandpa take the grandkids on a cruise, and they leave mom and dad behind. And I thought, oh, this is, this is brilliant. Oh, my goodness. Is this, this? I thought about the whole package. I thought about the whole, the whole thing here about, uh, you know, how many times do you hear stories about, uh, you know, uh, mom and dad are getting a divorce and uh, the kids are living with dad or the kids are living with mom or they're, you know, they're having shared custody. And uh, together, they may have been able to scrape up enough money to do a holiday with the kids and it could have been a cruise. But now they're separate and uh, dad is throwing child support at mom or, you know, whatever. And mom is working and dad is working and uh they're just getting by. Uh, it just didn't work out. And here we have these children, one, two, three, whatever. And then there's grandma and grandpa from one side and the other. And uh, visitation abilities are less. You know, sometimes grandparents don't get to see the kids as often as they used to. And, you know, you don't have that family setting anymore. It's all different now. It's all different. And um, skip gen cruising. Uh, how about grandma and grandpa grab the kids uh, uh, the two parents work it out and say, okay, yeah, sure. Take them for a week and take them on a cruise. Yeah, that's a great idea because now, you know, mom and dad are either apart and alone for a week uh, to kind of take care of themselves or just keep working or, or do whatever or have their own vacation. Uh, or mom and dad are at home. The cup, the happy mom and dad <laughs> just got rid of the kids. Grandma and grandpa are taking them on a cruise. And what are we going to do? <laughs> We're not going anywhere. The house is to our, we get the house to ourselves. We can do whatever we want here. Or, uh, gee, you know, uh, grandma and grandpa took the kids to Miami and they're getting on a Caribbean cruise for a week. And gee, why don't we fly to, uh, oh, Vegas uh, for mom and dad and have some adult uh, time, adult fun? What a great idea. Uh, I, I thought about that whole thing and I thought, wow, you know, for... Who isn't happy? I mean, the kids are getting spoiled rotten by you know who, by the you know by the culprits. By the time those kids get back, they're spoiled brats. Too bad. Uh, but grandma and grandpa are paying for it. Uh, uh, the kids are having the time of their life. Grandma and grandpa take them on the uh, Harmony of the Seas. Here's a suggestion: Harmony of the Seas. Uh, you know, and and dump them off at the kids zone, and they're gone. <laughs> grandma and grandpa are on the balcony, and they're 
they're relaxing and you know they're heading for the pool deck themselves and reading a book and getting a tan and grandpa's going to the spa for a little massage or what have you and uh and uh they don't have to worry about those kids <laughs> kids are on the ship and they're having the time of their life tomorrow we're going to be in labadee guess what we're going to do in labadee uh, for the day we got the zip lines kids are going to be on that we got the water park over here the kids are going to be on that oh you know this is great now if grandma and grandpa are are, are active seniors and you're getting uh getting off on say on a tender in grand cayman uh, okay, you grab grab the grandkids, get on a tender, head to shore, and uh, grandma and grandpa and the kids are heading for Stingray City. We're taking that, uh, we're doing that snorkel deal, and we're going to have two or three stops, including the Stingrays, and then we're going to take them to the turtle farm, and then we're going to be back on shore, uh, offshore, back onto the ship. Grandma and grandpa are going to head for a nap, and the kids are going to the water park on the cruise ship, and away you go. I mean, talk about the perfect way to look after the grandkids for the whole week uh all inclusive crews all they can eat all they can play oh man this is good stuff and for the parents a godsend <laughs> a break and then i thought about another idea how about grandma and grandpa take the kids and they take a repositioning cruise from miami all the way over to europe and they're going to end up in Southampton, or they're going to end up in Barcelona, or they're going to end up in Rome. It's 15 days, okay? For 15 days, the kids, the grandkids and grandma and grandpa are on the ship, and the kids are tearing that ship apart for the whole week, having a great old time. There will be several stops along the way, probably one in Bermuda, and then the Azores, and then perhaps a couple in Spain before you get to Rome, that kind of deal. And uh, mom and dad, in the meantime, uh, they're back home, and they're alone for a while, which is a, you know, a good thing. And, uh, and then they're taking the plane ride. And uh, they're flying over to Europe. Uh, they're landing in Paris, spending a week in Paris first. And then they're going to end up in Rome, where that cruise ship is going to end up. They're going to be in Rome when the ship gets there, 16 days later. And then they got a week with the kids in Europe, grandma and grandpa. Either grandma and grandpa have had enough and they're heading home now, <laughs> one way flight back, or, or all of them are together for you know a few days. And then they all come home together. I mean, talk about. Everybody gets something out of this deal. Uh, time spent, quality vacation time, uh, fun for everybody. Uh, you'll never forget this. And the pricing. You did it on a you did this deal on a repositioning cruise with grandma and grandpa getting a balcony room at the cheap price that they're gonna throw those out at. And then you put the kids either in the room with them, uh, or they give the kids an inside room or an adjoining room again at, at the at the repositioning cruise rates. Wow. What a deal. And the kids will eat more food than it'll cost you. And don't forget, Grandma and Grandpa, don't forget, be a shareholder of the cruise line so you get the room credit, the shareholder room credit, on top of all the other deals they're giving you for the cruise. Whether it's a Caribbean cruise for a week or a repositioning cruise, it doesn't matter. Make sure you're a shareholder. I did a video on that. You should check that out if you haven't seen it already. What are your thoughts, people? <laughs> so let's go to the folks. Let's go to the uh, questions. Um, let's see where I'm at. See if I've caught up with everybody here. Uh, uh, there have been comments coming in like crazy. Uh, here we go. Here we go. Um, uh, let's see here. Uh, uh, Sylvana saying uh, duct tape. Okay, duct tape. Why should you bring duct tape on a cruise? Okay, Sylvana saying uh, to uh, fix broken luggage, fix a hem on a dress uh, on a dress or dress pants, lint removal. Yeah, you know, wrap it around your hand and then get all the hair off and everything. Smart. Uh, cheap. Uh, stuff uh, uh, stuff to the wall in your cabin. Stick unruly children to the ice cream machine, etc. The uses are almost limitless. <laughs> yes, yes. Stick the kids to the ice cream machine and take off because they're not going to go anywhere. They're going to stay right there. Uh, Elizabeth Reen is saying, I cruise with one... Um, a neurotypical child and one autistic child. I've cruised many times with them, so I was just going to give tips on what works for us. A good, good idea there, Elizabeth, for sure. Mary W. is saying it's better to take the kids without the parents because they behave better without the parents around. And don't they just, don't they? Grandma and Grandpa have a way of kind of settling things down when they got them to themselves. Uh, I find that when grandma and grandpa are with them in the house, with the, in the kids' house, you know, their children's, 
and they don't do much. They kind of lay low and stay back because it's not their place to kind of discipline the kid. But when you're at grandma and grandpa's house for like, you know, two weeks in the summer, or you're camping with grandma and grandpa, or you're cruising with grandma and grandpa, there are whole new rules. It's now known as grandma and grandpa rules. They're not all that hard to follow. And the kids are pretty reasonable about it. And they kind of realize, you know, grandma and grandpa are imminently fair. <laughs> and they don't really pick sides all that much. They don't have like, you know, like with mom and dad, they have favorites. You know, you always liked him best. You like her best. Grandma and grandpa are different because they're the, the parents of the parents. And uh, yeah, it, it works better that way. That's a good, good little point there. I love that. Uh, yeah. Uh, PJ is saying, don't forget to get uh, permission slips for grandparents to get medical attention in case of emergency. All that good stuff. Absolutely. Good point. Uh, you have to look after that. You have to have permission to take them out of country or and all that sort of thing. You have to have the paperwork. I totally get you. But I'll tell you, boy, if you can uh, set it up where grandma and grandpa can have those kids uh, for a one-week cruise or a 10-day cruise, uh, wow, uh, that's quality time. Um, time is precious. Uh, you know, uh, those kids are 6, 8, 10, 12 years old, 14 years old, um, not too many years down the road. They may not want to spend any time with grandma and grandpa anymore. Uh, it's over. Uh, and the other thing on the other side is think about grandma and grandpa. How old are grandma and grandpa themselves? Uh, if they're in their uh, 50s, in their 60s, still active and healthy in their 70s, you know, time is limited how much longer this can be done with grandma and grandpa when they, they can't do it anymore. They just can't do it anymore. And so don't put it off to next time, next time. Don't play that game, mom and dad. Do this proactive thing and go, gee, you know, we should, we really should uh, find a way, even if we have to kick in some money to help out. I mean, if grandma and grandpa have enough for themselves, but they don't have much for the kids, well, we'll pay for the kids. I mean, we'll, we'll pay anything to get rid of these kids. Uh, so get the kids with grandma and grandpa for a week. And, uh, this is bonding. This is, uh, you know, might be the once in a lifetime this can be done in this kind of circumstance because what happens six months after the cruise, uh, you know, granddad's at home and he slips and falls and he breaks his hip and he's, he's now confined to a, you know, to a scooter and he's in pain all the time. and He can't go on a cruise anymore. I mean, you know, we, you had the chance six months ago and now it's over and can't be done again. Now the kids can, can't even hang out at grandma and grandpa's for a week anymore because they can't do all the little things for them anymore. This kind of stuff. And what about, you know, one of them passes and we, we lose them and now we've got a widow or a widower and uh, they're, you know, so depressed and they're, they're, you know, they're going down and uh, you can't put them on a cruise with the kids. You know, I don't know what can do. So food for thought. Uh, I, I love this idea. Skip. Gen cruising. I, I think uh, uh, Disney Cruises is perfect for this, uh, the Disney Cruise Line, if, especially if the kids are younger. Uh, you know, if you got these grandkids that are like uh, six and eight and ten, uh, wow, you know, that age group with grandma and grandpa for a week on a Disney cruise, oh, man, that is primo, just primo. You get to stop at the Disney private island, uh, the private K that they have, and uh, – Oh, I'll tell you, they'll spoil those kids rotten. They'll come back with souvenirs. Oh, my goodness. But I bet you they'll be well-behaved when they're down there. About that. That's, that's oh, I, I love this term. I think this is fantastic. Um, let me just see here where we're going. Oh, uh, 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 Elizabeth is saying for us autistic children, you need headphones for noise. It's very chaotic, and you need to make sure they have what they want at, at home. This is our vacation. They're they're only joining us. Make it make it just like home. Yeah, make it comfortable. Absolutely. Uh, Elizabeth went on to say they probably won't want excursions, so you'll have to understand. Uh, you may have to split up. They may not want the kids. They may, they may not want to be in the kids club. You may have to have them twenty four seven. So you got to keep that in mind as well. Mary W saying memories last forever. Stuff you buy them doesn't. Yeah, you see, there it is. Time, time with with uh, grandma and grandpa is is a is is critical. Uh, you know, when grandma and grandpa have got it together, <laughs> and, you know, they, they got all those faculties. I'll tell you, this is old fashioned, but boy, this is a good idea. And this has nothing to do with cruising. I'm just bringing this one up because I wish I had this more when I were younger, when I was younger. Uh, you're visiting grandma and grandpa. Uh, forget the, vi forget the video games. Uh, leave those, leave those at home. Uh, don't let the kids bring the video games to grandma and grandpa's. Cut it off. Um, Make grandma and grandpa or grandma or grandpa, one or the other, sit down with one of the kids or two of the kids or however you're going to do this, you know, the, the boy with the dad or the grandpa and the girls with the grandma and get them to pull out the photo albums. 
the photo albums of when you're the adults were children when their ch when their parents were babies and have grandma and grandpa go through those photo albums one page at a time and tell them who you're looking at and what the circumstances of those photos are because you as parents won't remember you, you don't even know and you may have wanted to forget they remember they don't let them give them a chance to pass this knowledge on to the next gen the gen after you uh because i've got photo albums for my parents and i'm looking at photos going who's this who's who's that i don't know who that is who am i going to ask i don't know who the person that the photo was taken of died in 19 you know 94. i mean they're they're gone and what circumstances was this photo taken at this is priceless information you got to do it that's why this cruising idea brilliant you've got them for seven whole days and nights seven dinners seven lunches seven breakfasts uh grandma and grandpa can teach them the proper etiquette of dining uh we're going to the dining room tonight and we're going to be with uh, sitting with linens and silverware we're going to have a four course meal and you kids are going to learn how to properly eat in a classy setting because at home you only go to mcdonald's and you only go to your friend's house once in a while and you eat on the couch and uh you don't know how to hold a fork <laughs> This is a chance for Grandma and Grandpa to do some, uh, um, you know, pruning and uh, trimming. And uh, this is good stuff. Uh, I tell you, this, I love this idea. I think this is brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Um, let's see what we got here. Any more comments in case I wanted to say anything else? Um, yeah, memory, memory, Mary, you're right. Memories last forever. This, you know, you can't replace this. This is just irreplaceable. It's, 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 uh, you can't put a price on it. It's just priceless. Absolutely priceless. Yeah, so grandma and grandpa, that's fantastic. Mom and dad are alone. You know, it could be that grandma and grandpa take the kids on one cruise and mom and dad are on another cruise ship going somewhere else. I mean, you're all back next Sunday or next Tuesday. You're all back at the same time. And uh, it's just that on this ship, grandma and grandpa over here, and on this ship, mom and dad went over, over there. You could do that. I mean, you can arrange it a million different ways. Uh, and, uh, you know, you're you just run the imagination. There's no end to it. I mean, just think of the possibilities that you could be talking about here. Um, fantastic stuff. Uh, and for grandma and grandpa, it's an easy deal, I think, because you don't have to make their beds. You don't have to worry about the laundry because you got to have enough clothes for the week. You don't have to worry about cleaning the room. Uh, you don't have to prepare any food for these kids. <laughs> it's all prepared for you. You have no dishes to wash. Uh, you're a hero. <laughs> Grandma and Grandpa are heroes. They're gods. <laughs> and the parents are just relieved. And they're alone for a while. And they can kind of de decompress from, from being parents for a week or so. Man, that's fantastic. Uh, the kids are going to have a blast. Uh, they're going to be spent of energy at the end of every night. And, uh, you know, uh, you're going to hear stories from Grandma and Grandpa. <laughs> you're going to hear stories. And, uh I think I think it's just a brilliant way to go. Uh, I would I would highly recommend you folks look into that. Skip Gen Cruising, fantastic. Uh, question for the first timers. Now back to the first timers. I was wondering. Another thought I had was, how long should the first cruise be? What are your thoughts, people? Um, you know, is a seven day cruise the perfect time? Should be four. Uh, should be longer. Uh, and then, you know, um, what uh, what cruise line would you recommend they consider for a first time cruise? Uh, should it be, you know, should we just get them on uh, get them on a value priced carnival deal, or uh, should they look for Holland America right off the get go, or, or you know, or, or what? Uh, um, I'm kind of curious what your thoughts are on that. I, I, my first ever cruise was Holland America, and I uh, got a really good deal. Uh, my uh, good friend of mine, uh, the, the couple that my wife and I went with, they. Uh, they we scoped out a cruise together we found it on vacations to go.com and they had booked cruises before they knew their stuff they'd used vacations to go before and they found a beautiful deal from from san diego down to mexico and back and we ended up in a balcony room all in america one week cruise oh talk about fantastic uh service was great the bedding was wonderful the towels were plush service was awesome in the restaurants very nice caffeine free diet coke took some along with me cheers everybody we had a blast and uh, we're still friends <laughs> has a great time um but you know is is norwegian the way to go or should it be royal caribbean maybe it has to do with how old they are how active they are right i mean if we're talking about first timers that are 65 years old 
Uh, are we going to put them on an action-packed flow rider, wall climbing, uh, water slide, action-packed cruise ship? I don't think that's going to work out too well. I mean, it might, but I don't think that's the thing we should do with them. Uh, maybe we should kind of target celebrity and uh, Princess Cruise and uh, maybe Hall America, you know, uh, that kind of thing. Kind of curious what your thoughts are on that. Uh, if the couple, you know, it's a honeymoon cruise. Uh, you know, they're they're 24, 25 years old, 21 years old. Uh, you know, they, 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 a cruise is being um, a cruise is being put together for them as a gift, a wedding gift. Uh, they've never been on a cruise ship before as adults. Maybe they were as have as children, but maybe not. Uh, and uh, what are we going to do with them? W what are we going to do with a honeymoon couple uh, for their first ever cruise? What 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 do you suggest, folks? Uh, um, you know, there, maybe there, there's just got to be privacy. <laughs> We've got some. We have some business to take care of, don't we? <laughs> but also, uh, we want to have some fun too, and so some good shows and uh, great shore excursions. Uh, fantastic amenities on the ship, you know, that kind of thing. So love to get your thoughts on that if any of you want to talk about that. Uh, Chevy and First just arrived. Hi, everybody. Uh, happy Friday, everybody, she's saying. Welcome, Chevy and First. Uh, you're, I know you're in Atlanta, Georgia. Welcome to the crowd. Fantastic to have you here. Welcome to Friday. Teresa is saying, uh, first timers, she's saying, seven days and depending on how old they are and if they have kids traveling with them, depends on the cruise line, I would recommend, yeah. If you, if it's two plus two two children, two adults, two children, that's another thing to think about, isn't it? If it's just two adults only, you know, then we have another way to think about it. Uh, Elizabeth is saying mine was a seven day cruise, and it was very overwhelming. Um, living in Florida, I truly like a four day cruise. Uh, I felt like it was such a nice getaway. Now, uh, if I was going to the Mediterranean, all well, fourteen days, yeah, I, absolutely. You got the time change to deal with when you get there. If you can get there a couple of days before your cruise and get the time change out of the way, that would be a good way to go. Uh, Karen, Karen Lipschen saying seven days, hot destinations. Yep, that, that's that's a Canadian talking. That's a Canadian in Calgary, Alberta, where it's 20 below right now, 40 below with the wind, and seven foot drifts on her driveway from shoveling the driveway. That's You got that right. <laughs> Every Canadian, I'll tell you, seven days, hot like that's what we want you bet you Karen. you got it christine is saying uh, the first for me uh, i'm still working uh i chose a five night uh sweet celebrity special with a drink package wi-fi and gratuities priority embark and debark to make the first time less stressful you can't go wrong with that uh that is that is the the ultimate of ultimates uh you would have been treated i hope very nicely uh, that would have been a great cruise, and oh, how hard is it to go back from that? <laughs> you can get used to that awful fast, I would say. Uh, Karen is saying, uh, try to go with an experienced cruiser to show you the ropes. Bingo. That's exactly right, Karen. You know it. Uh, if you can do it, you know, if you can go with someone you know. Uh, you know, I tell you, folks, I'm telling you right now, if you've got a, a friend of yours or a relative of yours, someone you get along with really well, and they've been cruising before, and they've been telling you you should do this, and they're offering you to go with you on a cruise. You got to take them up on this deal. Uh, you'll 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 thank them for it. I'll tell you. Um, just make sure the rooms aren't next door. <laughs> uh, make sure your room is on one side of the ship somewhere, and then they're on the other side somewhere else, or on different deck levels at least, because you don't want to hear you know banging in the middle of the night uh, or uh, anything else. Uh, somebody somebody likes certain kind of music that you don't like. You know, get, get loud. The, the walls can be kind of thin when it's the wrong kind of music. Uh, so have a little bit of distance between you, and you'll be fine. Um, but yeah, if you can go with someone who's done it before, uh, they'll show you the ropes and they'll guide you through the whole thing, and you'll be prepped before you even get there, and you'll compare notes every night at dinner time. Primo, absolute primo way to go. Uh, Christine is saying uh, first that oh that was Christine and then Karen's talking about going with someone else. Francis says talking now. He's saying you are so right, Karen. My husband and I uh, we were so confused. We were so confused. Laugh out loud on our first cruise. Yeah, if you can go with someone who's done it before, it's easy. It's so easy. She, I mean, first saying uh, uh, she's saying I did buy the uh, the fun uh, to fast the fun uh, fast to the fun pass on my first cruise. I'm glad to hear it's uh, it's it's good to have. Yep, it is. Christine saying, we'll see. It's in November, Western Caribbean. Yeah, it's coming. Susan McGuigan is saying, went with sister-in-law, went with sister-in-law who had cruised before. 
uh, first week in January, and the ship still had holiday decorations, and it was at a rock bottom price. It is at a rock bottom price. So that, the first two three weeks of January, super cheap. Uh, everyone just got out of Christmas and New Year's. Everyone's broke. Everyone's exhausted. Most people have used up their holiday time. Uh, they don't want to go anywhere. They just want to kind of recover. And the cruise lines are desperate for passengers. They're they're desperate for the business. The cruise ships have got to be moving all the time. They cannot sit in port for a week and do nothing. They got 12, 12 13, 15, 1,600 crew members sitting there. They're being paid every day. They got to feed them. You got to keep that ship moving. And so uh, cruise deals are to be had early January every year, uh, just so you know, for next year. Dylan is saying, uh, just uh, just wing it, go with the flow. Yes, Dylan, you can do that. And uh, there's nothing wrong with that either. You just got, just don't sweat the small stuff and don't worry about it. It'll all work out. Yes. But for those of us out there who want a little more uh, certainty, well, you know, kind of keep an eye on that. Mark, the lost traveler, has just arrived. He says, hello, everybody. 75 here. 16 more days till the Norwegian Cruise Line getaway. And uh, Mark's in, I think, Orlando. Welcome, sir. Uh, Christine is here. She's uh, is, is saying jealous, Mark. She's very jealous. <laughs> uh, Mark, we're talking about what kind of tips to give a first-timer. What's the important tip a first-timer should know about? Uh, what's the perfect length for a first-timer for a cruise? Uh, should they get an inside room or a balcony room? Uh, what if they can't afford the balcony room? Is an inside okay? Uh, you know, that kind of stuff. We're trying, to, we're trying to give these folks tips that they should know about. Uh, and that should be aware of and, uh, you know, make the experience that much more fun. Uh, yeah, these, um, these, uh, these tips are all excellent, folks. Uh, another one that I'd recommend is if, if it's just the two of you going on a cruise um, and, and you don't know, any else, no, don't know anybody else on the cruise at all, uh, when it comes time to go for dinner, uh, if you go to the main ballroom, uh, the main dining room, I should say, um, might be a good idea to, uh, to uh, say to the maitre d', the captain there, that'll seat you. Tell them, uh, yeah, looking for, uh, you know, look for dinner for two, and we don't mind uh, sharing a table with, you know, six, eight others. Get get together with a table of six or eight or ten, and uh, you'll meet all kinds of other folks, and they're all like you. They're all cruisers, uh, and they'll all have their stories about the first time they ever cruised, uh, which what number is this one, uh, whether they've been on this cruise line before or whether they're lifers. They've always and only been on this cruise line. Uh, they'll tell you experiences that they've had, and they'll they'll share tips with you. They'll talk to you about uh, what are you doing tomorrow? Are you going? We're going to uh, we're going to be in Cozumel tomorrow. What what are you doing tomorrow? And if you don't, you have no plans. Uh, they'll give you suggestions because some of them will have been there, and they'll say, "Oh, well, you got to do this tour, or or oh, you don't need to do a tour. Just get off the ship, grab a cab, tell them you want to go there, you know, blah 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 place, and for fifteen bucks." You'll see beautiful views of the harbor, and you know, you, oh, you'll learn so much. You'll make you'll start making friends on board. Uh, you'll be surprised. It'll be a lot of fun. Uh, Jay Sonic is uh, is also here. Uh, hey, buddy, how you doing? Welcome from Montreal. Uh, sorry I'm late. Uh, welcome, pal. Uh, Elizabeth is saying instead of using the uh, the ATM and spending money, uh, you can use the casino if you like to do that, and then just cash out. So if you want fifty bucks in cash, and you add sixty bucks in the machine. Gamble ten and just cash your ticket out. Very good, very good little suggestion. Because uh, what you folks uh, you have to realize, you see this little card here, little blue thing right here. There we go. This is uh, this is my room card from the Norwegian Epic when I was on the Epic. And uh, on the back, I've got my little Madeira, Madeira Spa uh, pass there. But uh, you see that little card in that you put this into a slot machine, and um, you can charge to your room slot dollars. <laughs> Very handy and very very convenient, but also very uh, deadly because <laughs> uh, it's so easy just to kind of put it in there and you know give me another hundred bucks. I want to play a little more. Just another just another hundred bucks. I mean, what's a hundred bucks anyway? You play with this. Uh, like she said, you need some cash. Uh, you going on shore? You want to have some U.S. money? A piece of cake. Just go to the casino. Don't use the ATM machine. It's a two seventy five charge uh, from the machine. It's another two bucks from your bank at home. Forget that nonsense. Put this into your uh, slot machine, any slot machine. Uh, rack up, like she said, rack up 60 bucks. Charge it to your room. It's just going to be added to your room bill. And uh, uh, you get, uh, you can play a couple of hands if you want and then cash out. And the ticket will say, you know, you got a $50 balance here or whatever the balance is. Walk that over to the cage. They'll, they'll pay you cash. Here's your 50 bucks. You got, you had 50 bucks cash. That's what you wanted. That's what you got. You need $100 cash. 
charge 100 110 on your card and uh and cash in a hundred dollar check just remember you know if you need 50 bucks cash and you and you charge <laughs> you charge you charge 60 on this okay remember this is a tip you charge 60 on this and you need 50 okay don't be gambling 50 dollars and lose it because you've only got 10 bucks that wasn't the point of the program okay the point of the deal was to charge 60 use up 10 and then go get the 50 okay get the hell out of there <laughs> now it won't work on the morning of the uh the morning when you want to get off the ship because when you came into port last night you left international waters and you came into the harbor they shut the casino down you can't run the casino when the ship is at port so you got to think ahead if tomorrow morning we're going to be in so and so and i want to have some cash with me i better go to the casino now before i go to bed tonight and use this little trick right here have the cash on me now take the cash back to my room and then tomorrow morning when we leave the ship got the cash okay because you can't otherwise you're stuck with the atm and now you got those dastardly banking fees that you're gonna have to pay so keep that in mind that's a good tip elizabeth thank you uh <laughs> let's see here karen lipson saying uh, we prefer tables uh for six as conversations on larger tables is hard to hear a noisy restaurant yes yeah, so if you got six you know there's you and uh, you know you and your husband and four others uh it's easy peasy you get around and you're talking a little maybe you're on a round table and uh, the waiters have an easy time to get in and out of there with the food and you can you can you can have a few conversations going and everybody hears everybody fantastic great way to socialize as first timers uh, or or veterans i mean if you've been cruising for years and you've never done this before you should try it you should try it if you're uh, you just never know you'll meet someone at a at a cruise uh, cruise dining table uh, another couple that are kind of your age and uh you'll find that you've done 15 cruises they've done 20 you've done two cruises they've done four uh, you know whatever and uh you're from georgia they're from uh, new york you're from california they're from arizona you don't know uh and uh you, you get to know them a little bit and it's a couple hours and that's all there is it's a couple hours if you don't you know you talk for a while and you find that they're nice but i wouldn't hang out with these guys i wouldn't you know i wouldn't go on shore with them they may feel the same way it's okay you just have dinner you know there's six of you there but you may find that uh, there's another couple over there that you got to know and these folks, they like what you like, and they like to talk about what you like to talk about, and what they're t the stories they're talking about are the kind of stories you want to hear. <laughs> they got they got stories you can't believe, and uh, they're kind of like a YouTuber, and uh, <laughs> but you get to see them in person. Well, these are the folks you might just be hanging out the rest of the cruise with these guys, and vice versa, because they like what you're talking about. They love your stories, and they love your style. Who knows? So. Uh, the more folks you meet, the more folks you're going to get to know. It's just the way it is. Um, uh, Jay Sonic's telling us in Montreal, it's now 19. It feels like 12. Uh, oh, boy, uh, why we can't get up 32. Uh, it's winter. And in Montreal, boy, this is normal. And it's bitter. It, it, it bites in Montreal. The air, if it moves, it, yeah, it, it's not fun. Uh, Chevy and First is saying, I plan, um, she's saying, I plan on taking a set amount to play on in the casino is the casino 24 hours no uh not only if it's if you're at sea so if you're at sea for a sea day it's open all day long open all night long as long as the ship is in international waters the casino is open as soon as the ship arrives uh, in uh, comes into uh, water the u.s waters or jamaican waters or whatever then they have to shut it down because if they keep running it, they have to pay a percentage of the take to the to the country. And certain countries don't allow gambling on cruise ships in their territorial waters. So only in international waters do they run it. But if you win a jackpot, they generally don't have a withholding on the on the uh, jackpot apparently. So that's okay. Uh, let me think here. Uh, let me look at this message. Crash three X is saying, uh, go to the dollar slot uh, or twenty five cent slot. Spin once and cash out. Crash. I have to tell you, um, it's like Lay's potato chip chips. You know, sometimes you just can't have one. <laughs> you, 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 you got that. It's 60 bucks. He wants a 50. Why not try $10 worth of action? And you might get lucky. You know, it happens. But you're right. Uh, if you, <laughs> you can do it. If you can do it that way, do it that way. Uh, it's up to you. 
Uh, Jay, uh, Jay Sonic is saying, uh, need to go make my bed and hand some, hit some supper right now. Have a great afternoon and evening, Bruce and friends. Jay, thanks for popping in. See you later. <laughs> Crash your ex. My hubby hates socializing. He always wants a table for two. Problem is, I'm a people person. As he says, I will talk to a lamppost if it looks interesting enough. Isn't that the way that goes? You know, one of us loves to hang out, one of us doesn't. I go both ways sometimes. Some some days I kind of just like to be by myself and, uh, you know, with my wife and I, we just kind of whatever. And other times, oh, yeah, we'll sit with other people, you know. Um, but, you know, this is, a, this is a way to meet other folks if you uh, want to play that. Sherman is saying, uh, I play poker and take a certain amount of money to play. Uh, when I have three times the amount that I started with, I think he's saying, I quit. Or uh, if it's lost, I quit. And uh, I never start with more than the original amount, bankrolling the excess. Well, there you go. Now, there's, you know, if you can stick to that kind of program, uh, way to go. And uh, you'll limit your losses to a set amount that you're prepared to handle. And away you go. That's the way to do it. Mark, the lost traveler, is commenting. First cruise was a four-day to see if I would like it. I met an older couple who had been cruising since Noah's Ark. <laughs> They were great. They showed me all the ins and outs of cruising, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Isn't that fantastic? Yet, you see, this is another thing about, about being a first-timer on a cruise. You, you do that dinner thing, and, and you meet up with some people at a table, at a dinner table, and you find that there's a couple there, like, you know, you're in your 40s, your 50s, and you meet a couple that are kind of your age, maybe a little older, a little younger, and they've done 10 cruises. And they've been on this cruise line forever. And they'll tell you stuff you've never thought to think about, to, to ask. And uh, they'll be more than happy to show you around. They'll, they'll be more than happy to tell you some of the secrets of cruising. They'll be more than happy to tell you some of the, you know, if you're going to order a rum and Coke from the thing up there at the, the pool deck, slip the guy a couple of bucks and, uh, and the drinks get stronger and all kinds of stuff. They got all the tips, the tricks, the, the what fors, and they know shore excursions. They know all about shore excursions. They'll steer you straight. They may actually give you tips that can save you so much wasted money that you would have other, otherwise blown away. You, you just never know. And uh, a veteran is a veteran. Uh, experience is priceless. I'll tell you. Uh, Tracy McFarling saying good night, uh, Jay Sonic. Uh, Chevy and First is saying uh, yeah, that's a good tip, Sherman. Uh, that was the ship about uh, how you know how to limit your losses. Uh, Hedgehog saying good night. Um, and um, Mark Lost Traveler, uh, you go both ways, laugh out loud. <laughs> uh, Elizabeth is saying, uh, I'm always afraid I am too much of a people person and I don't want to bother people. Well, Elizabeth, I've got to say, if you're being sat at a table of six or eight folks, it would almost be rude not to talk to somebody sitting next to you. I mean, you're going to say hi when you get there. and you know, Everyone's going to ask what your name is. You're going to find out what all of their names are. You can try to remember them. I'm terrible with names uh, in, a, in a real you know, live setting like that. Uh, I'm just glad here on this uh, ticker it tells me who I'm talking to. <laughs> uh, but, you know, you get to a table of six or eight. Uh, you're socializing. That's the whole point of the exercise. Why not? And, uh, you know, you've just had your salad and you're waiting five minutes now for the main course to arrive. And you're going to shoot the breeze and uh, talk about what you did today. Maybe you're talking about how good the sea was, how bad the sea was. Or did anyone, did any of you guys uh, see the, you know, the belly flop competition or did you guys do this or did you, you know, or has any of you folks ever been to the art auction, you know, that kind of stuff. So you got, you got stuff to talk about. Oh, what happened yesterday? What happened today? What's going to happen tomorrow? Oh my gosh. So much. Uh, Mark the Lost Traveler, Crash 3X. By the end of the second day, I know just about everybody on the cruise. <laughs> I am a people person. I think I, I made friends with the lamppost. <laughs> Yes, Mark, uh, you know, if you're just like that, uh, it's a good thing. I think it's a good thing. <laughs> the only bad thing, Mark, is if you're if you're walking along the pool deck and you sort of see people running away from you, <laughs> scattering when you're, you know, like the, the waters are parting in front of you, maybe you're being a little too direct. <laughs> but on the other hand, if we're all coming up to you for asking, asking you for your autograph, you got something going on. So <laughs> it all depends on how it works out. We all have our ways. <laughs> Teresa like that. She's laughing out loud. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, I got to say, folks, this has been another good one today so far. I am really happy with how this is going. 
I love that term, next gen cruising. I think that is a, a, a really interesting thing. Um, I'm, I'm surprised I hadn't heard of it before. I, maybe I'm just so out of touch. I, I don't know what's going on. I'm so obsessed with my subscriber, subscriber count. I don't know what it is. Uh, but anyway, uh, next gen cruising. I think this is a fantastic thing for the grandparents to take the grandkids on a cruise. What a great way for the kids to spend time with grandparents. A limited time opportunity, folks. Uh, time is the enemy here. And uh, not only for the grandparents, but for the kids. Because they go to high school, it's over. Uh, <laughs> you're not getting the kids to go with a grandma and grandpa on a cruise now. I don't think so. Uh, not until not until college. Uh, but, you know, what a wonderful, uh, what a wonderful graduation present uh, for a grandparent, one or both. To take a graduating student on a, uh, you know, on a one a one week or ten day cruise to celebrate the graduation of one's, uh, you know, scholastic career, the celebration of that, and spending a little bit of time with grandma, and grandpa while they still can, and uh, it may well be the last time that, uh, you know, they got together like that. The child will never forget it. Never will they ever forget that. Uh, Something to think about. Anyway, that is, uh, I think, a fantastic uh, thing. Uh, we got some good buys coming here. Um, <laughs> to actually say, when I cruise with my sister, Teresa M., you would never know we are family at all until it comes to dinner. We have this unspoken shorthand. My sister-in-law found it hilarious on our last trip. <laughs> Francis is saying good night all. To, enjoyed listening and chatting. See you, Francis. Mark Lost Traveler. Never, never have had that happen yet. <laughs> Talking about the crowd separating or folks coming for an autograph? Uh, not yet, huh? Uh, when, uh, Mark's saying that uh, when, when you do all the crazy events around the ship, people, uh, people, you, you, the people know you. Don't, don't know how many times I've done karaoke and people will say, they, they, hey, there's Mark. Yeah, that's right. I, I had this happen to me too. Uh, my first ever cruise, uh, the, the first, the first uh, night entertainment. Uh, was in the main dining, uh, you know, the main uh, the main uh, showroom, I should say, and uh, uh, went with my friends, uh, the couple that took us uh, along. You know, we went for this cruise with them, and we were sitting in like the first or second row. We were right down at the front. That's where they wanted to go, and that's where we went. And we were sitting down there, and they had this uh, had this act going on on stage, like all these different events going on, and they were calling for volunteers. They wanted volunteers from the audience, and. Uh, my hand put his hand up. He grabbed my hand. He put my hand up with it. And we got called up right now. And so next thing you know, I'm on stage with my buddy on the, uh, on the, on, on the main stage. I'm in front of the, you know, a thousand seats. I think we're probably six, 700 people there. First cruise, I'm now on stage. <laughs> and apparently, oh, I had to bring my wife. As a matter of fact, we, I think we both had to bring our wives. If I recall, I'm trying to remember how this worked. Had my wife on stage with me and uh, we had to do this competition thing, uh, uh, and uh, there were three other couples on stage that were all up there. And uh, wouldn't you know it, my wife and I won this little little competition that we were involved with. Well, guess what? They hand us an envelope, a uh, first prize envelope. It was a $50 uh, certificate, dinner for two, in this premium restaurant on board the Holland America Oosterdam. We got the special dining deal just for coming up on stage. Well, nice way to start a cruise, I would say. And I think my buddy and I were up on stage a couple of days later for another little demonstration of some kind. I don't know if we got anything for that one, but it was a lot of fun. And uh, it was just a great time. A great time. Um, <laughs> so, Mark, yeah, you, you do karaoke. You sing karaoke? Yeah, they're going to know you. You got that right. That's awesome, pal. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Uh, Teresa saying, my husband and I play all the trivia and games, and we always get to know the activity staff and folks on the ship. Absolutely. Uh, uh, they'll they look out for you. They're always saying hi to you every time they pass you. It's great. Elizabeth is saying the first seven day uh, breeze cruise I went on, I ended up at the kids table. It was horrendous. She's saying everyone was at the uh, eight adult table uh, with her is Liz with the kids. I was thirty seven. Oh, you didn't. You don't want to be doing that. No, you don't. Don't ever do that again. Yeah, get away from those kids tables. You want to be on the adult only table. Uh, where you can talk to the uh, to the other adults, absolutely. <laughs> that has to be that's got to be bad. Anyway, yeah. What are you gonna do? Well, folks, I think I'm gonna uh, wrap it up. It's been an hour and twenty some odd minutes, and uh, it just goes just like that, doesn't it? Just, just the time just flies. Tomorrow is uh, Saturday. I'm on at two o'clock Eastern time tomorrow afternoon. Tell your friends. Tell anybody you know that uh, has never watched before. 
uh, come and join the party at two o'clock tomorrow afternoon, uh, Saturday. Uh, we'll talk cruise ships and uh, we'll come up with some more topics to discuss. Uh, I just uh, love this every day. I'm really enjoying it. I hope you are too. Um, the numbers are going up every day. I notice the amount of minutes that are being piled up as to how many folks are kind of coming and going during this telecast. They're growing and I'm so proud of that. And I uh, hope you're enjoying it. If there's any topics you want me to bring up from time to time, just mention it. Be happy to look into it. Uh, the subscriber count is going up uh, every day, and I'm so thankful for that. We're going for a thousand, and uh, hopefully, uh, those of you, there's some of you today are, are going to join my channel and become subscribers. That would be fabulous. Um, and uh, if you know of anyone, anyone out there who knows someone that might want to become a subscriber of this channel, put the word out. We'd love to have them. Uh, Crash Your X is saying good night. It's dinner time. Sherman Mercer saying thank you for another great afternoon. See you next time. Debbie Emanuel saying bye, Bruce. Another great episode. Teresa McFarland is saying good night. Wes Morrison saying awesome show. Uh, I, uh, I think it was fantastic. Thank you all for participating and, and saying hi, saying bye, and everything else in between. And uh, we'll do this again tomorrow, 2 o'clock in the afternoon, and I'm taking Sunday off. <laughs> Got to rest the vocals. And uh, we'll see what's going on. Uh, Mark, good night, everybody. He's saying I will not be here tomorrow. I'll be scuba diving in the Keys. Way to go, Mark. Enjoy it. Have a great time. Maybe we'll see you Monday or Tuesday next week. Uh, have a great one, folks. So I'm going to say my goodbyes. Uh, uh, <laughs> Teresa saying you suck Mark you suck this is Bruce with Traveling with Bruce saying goodbye from Creston British Columbia here in Canada thanks for joining me today we'll see you next time on Traveling with Bruce tomorrow 2 Eastern have a good night everybody and take care okay we'll see ya